Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. I was recently asked by a grieving widow if I would make an urn for her husband's ashes. He was a woodworker, so I got to get this right. If you stay with me, I'm going to show you how to make an urn, at least how I do it. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Um, the gentleman that uh, this is going to be for uh, was a woodworker, so obviously we have to have dovetails. He was a big fan of that. He's actually followed us on YouTube and was a good customer. The design challenge is, this is the box that the ashes are stored in. And it's not the, uh, it's not the best shape in terms of pleasing. So I can lay it this way and build a box around it. I could have it this way and build a box around it. But I think if it sits like this, that's going to be closest to some nice proportions. Uh, I'd, I'd like to be able to make a few more changes, but I can't because I've got to stick with this, this size. At least the interior size is going to be this. Uh, but the way I'm going, planning to do this, this isn't something that you want someone coming into your home and taking the lid off. So although there'll be a lid, the lid will be sealed. And the bottom will be screwed in place. So the box will go up in, put the screws in, and it's there unless somebody has to open it for some reason. So... That is the concept I'm going to work with. The actual lid is really going to be, uh, I wouldn't say the showpiece, but it's going to really cap it off. So I've got some good ideas there that I'll show you with. Actually, we'll do a few prototypes. Dovetails will be nice. They'll, uh, they'll stand out. Nice thing about cherry, dovetails and cherry, is that the end grain really stands out. So you get a good contrast between the tails and the pins. And as I mentioned, or briefly, is that uh, we decided cherry. Now, when it comes to wood, you could use anything for this. There's nothing special about any one particular. But she liked cherry. He liked cherry. And it's just, it ages nicely. And I also mentioned that the contrast on dovetails really stands out nicely on cherry. The first task is to plane the inside and then shoot all of the edges so everything is perfectly square. And when it comes to preparing the inside, since this really isn't going to be seen, it's gonna be the inside of the box where the other container goes, all I'm gonna do is just get rid of any snipe marks, which will improve the joinery. And I'm not gonna worry about a little bit of plane tracks or anything like that, like I would on the outside. Now we'll go through and shoot these. First thing we want to do is square the bottom. I never trust table saw, chop saw, or anything like that. I do trust a shooting board. Now that we know that we've got a, uh, a straight bottom, I'll just do the top real quick. Now first thing we need to do is cut a little chamfer on these. Should be enough, flip that over. It's a little bit heavy, I'm gonna back that off a bit. I'm gonna come back, that actually twisted on me. There. Same thing over here. First thing we do is cut our chamfer, then put our reference surface against the fence. Now I gotta make sure the other piece is the same length, so I'll do this, then I'll come back and I'll do this one, but I'll reference it off of that, and the same thing on the other end. Now, I check the opposite piece. Uh, maybe one more pass. That's good. Your fingers can feel less than a thousandth of an inch, so kind of accuracy. You don't need anything beyond your fingers. Automotive refinishers tape. Sometimes in lieu of cutting a 
a rabbit with my skew block plane. And the reason is it uh, doesn't change the inside dimensions of the box. Whereas when you cut the rabbit, everything moves in by the depth of, in a box, two rabbits. But this one, you use the tape, take it off, and you're done. Okay, now they have to be trimmed. So I'll just put them on a block and come in there and lay the knife up against it. Helps. All right, now, next move is to go ahead and set the marking gauge for the thickness of the board. They're all the same, so it'll be the same setting. So I like to just set it on there like that and just drop it down when you hear it touch. Because that cutter's flat, you know that that dimension is going to be the exact width or thickness of the board. Now, where do we put the tails? Where do we put the pins? I tend to always put the tails on the longer of the two pieces. So let's just set this up. Three, three. So that's the approximate look of your box. Um, I, for some reason, to me, uh, tails on a short piece like that just don't work. I would rather that be pins. So my tails will be on this piece and on that piece. So that means that we're going to, on this tail board, we're going to cut, score all the way around. On the pin board, we're only going to score the face, then the inside face and the outside face. And I'm going to do it fairly lightly on the outside so that I don't end up having to deal with a, uh, a deep gauge line. I would rather have a very minimal one that I can easily get rid of when I plane up, clean up the front. I'm going to make sure this one is good and deep. We'll leave a link below to our video on cutting dovetails if you need help. I just wanted to mention that cut through the tape always works better if you do multiple passes. And then just lift this section up. And that'll provide you with a good ledge. So when it comes time to lay the tailboard over the pin board, that'll reference against there and it'll line those two pieces up perfectly. Okay. So I want to get this layout right. And by saying that, I mean, I just want it to look right. I'm going to put a piece of yellow tape on here. I think it might be a little easier for you to see. Now I'll just trim, actually I'll just bend it down like that, that's even easier. So you can see where the... So the first thing we have to decide is our outside half pin. And I always take into account how wide the piece is and also how thick the material is. So, I set it on here like that. I wouldn't want it that wide, too big, looks clunky. And... I wouldn't want it that small, too fragile. So somewhere, uh, and I'm, I'm not measuring this, I'm not using any way of determining this other than just what feels right. So I'm looking at that and thinking maybe right about there. So I'd go ahead and leave a mark on either end. And then we've got to go in with our spacing. Now, really don't know how many tails I'm gonna want. I'm gonna guess and start right there. And I'll just step it off carefully. Try not to leave marks yet. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I want to be on the other side of that other half pin mark. And that's not getting me there. So I'm going to open these up a little bit. Okay, so that's going to give me... I think I'll go with that. That's going to give me a pin that's narrower than the outside half pins, but not too small. And again, it's just a look. I'll go with that. So I'll go ahead and step these off. Corners are cut. Everything is all cleaned up. Dovetails are ready. I do have to cut little chamfers on the inside of the tails before I put it together. Now, before I actually cut the grooves, I want to experiment and, and walk you through my thinking process on what we're gonna do for the lid. I don't want just a flat lid, I want it to be raised up. Just give it some shape that'll make it look um, more of an ornament instead of just a box. 
and the bottom's not going to be an issue. I'm also thinking of possibly elevating the uh, base by just putting a very slight curve so that you end up with feet instead of just having the whole box sit there like that. So I'm going to grab a piece of pine, approximately that size, and we'll have a, we'll uh, just look at it and see what we can come up with in terms of a pleasing shapes. And what I'm thinking is having a bevel, a bevel, a bevel, a bevel with a flat top. And if I don't like okay, there. There. I'm actually going to take the time to shape this, which is the other advantage to working with pine. It's relatively quick and easy to cut. And now I'm not going to divide. I'm not going to divide this into three, so I'm going to do the same or use the same dimension from there to there. Now the next question is how high to make it. And I think I want to have it come up above the top. The option is to have it flush with the top, to have it sunken down in, but I really didn't, I didn't allow for having it sunken down in. That would take too much of the space, the vertical space. So I think I, I, I'm envisioning having it sitting up above, which means I'm going to have to have a little bit of a rabbit down here to go into the groove. But in order to... How much? I think that looks all right. So I'll go over to the table saw and I'll set that for that, for that uh, angle and then I can just go all the way around. So you got to use your imagination a little bit. We don't have everything pulled together tight. Actually, can't put that one on. So just kind of get a look. And that's kind of what I had envisioned I wanted. So I'm going to stay with those dimensions. And now uh, the challenge is going to be uh, but I, I've got the plane to do it. I was going to say the challenge is going to be I really don't want to come into I don't want to come into a groove like that. That never works. You get a little bit of expansion. I want to have a tongue on there that will fit in with a little bit of a little bit of slack. So I can I can go ahead and cut that from the underside, stopping short apply my tongue, apply my, we'll call it a tongue, and then I can come in there and I can plane that with my bench rabbit plane, which planes right to the edge. So I'll go and process a piece of cherry, this plus the amount to go into the grooves on both ends, and then uh, I'll get it to this stage and show you how we finish it up. Okay, lid is done. Now I'm going to put a final pass on it. So what I did in order to set that down in and then to make it so that I could easily plane that, because if you actually came down here and then over, as I mentioned, you have to use this, the uh, you have to use this plane, which the only problem is you're having to work right into a horizontal surface and just run the risk of scarring that. So what it was much easier to do was to simply leave that as one plane, plane it, and then go back in and cut a rebate on there. Now I'm going to cut an eighth inch groove to house it all the way around and I'm going to cut the groove just inside the half pin so I can plow all the way through so it's going to go from about here to here.
anytime you cut a wrap, you're cutting that from both sides. You just don't have 100% control when that was being cut. So what that means is it might be tight in some areas. For instance, there. It's loose there. Loose there. Not so bad there. And snug there. So I'll get it close and then I'll bring that down to final fit with a hand plane. Hey, if you I'm like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. I should, uh, I should actually cut a chamfer on that. All right, let's worry about the base. Yeah, that's obvious. So, um, started off with a thick piece, and we can cut it down from there. So, what I'm going to look at this corner and just kind of actually, the first thing to do is just kind of well, what do we want to copy? We obviously don't want it to be straight. We've got a bevel there that we could possibly incorporate, but I would I would want it to be. Obviously a long one coming down like this. And I'm kind of thinking that might work. In fact, I'm also thinking that the thickness might work too. I'm not sure. Remember, this is going to be screwed in from the bottom. Um, I think what I'll do, and I can work it with just one corner. I'm going to go over and I'm going to cut a bevel and just put this on the corner and see what it looks like. So I'm going to start with about, oh, maybe 10 degrees.
Now the nice thing about working one corner is we can set whatever reveal we want. I don't think that works. Yeah, I'm thinking this is too thick. Just too overpowering. So I'm gonna run that through the thickness planer. I'm gonna leave that bevel for now. I'm gonna take that down, it's measures. In it. Okay, before I do anything, or before I change the thickness, I'm gonna go over and I'm going to take, add another, uh, I'm gonna try 15 degrees. This is actually starting to look like a monument of sorts. Okay, I think that's, I think that, uh, I think that amount of bevel actually works. Um, I actually think that works. This is tall, so I don't mind how thick this is or how tall that is. And uh, based on, for whatever reason, based on what it's designed to be, I think that actually looks good. And whether they want to do it or not, that could be laser engraved with uh, the individual with his birth and death date or a plaque, a small, a small plaque. I think that works. So <clears throat> ended up with a piece of cherry. Now I've got sap with them a little bit on one side, but that's all I had for for uh, eight quarter cherry, I had to take it down. That finished dimension, by the way, is an inch and a sixteenth. So I thought, okay, this, it's not gonna be taken off very often, but it has to be taken off at least once to put the container inside. And I wanted to make it a little bit easier for them to actually line it up. So I took a piece of eighth inch uh, Baltic birch and I fit it to the inside so it was snug. And the fact that it's Baltic birch and it's not gonna move means I'm not gonna have any problems with seasonal change. Now I've screwed it to a piece of solid wood. So you may be thinking, well, what's gonna happen there? Well, I kept the screws in an inch, and in an inch from each edge. So they're only a couple and a half inches apart, which means there's not gonna be enough movement to bother it. And that screw will allow in this, in the hole, the countersunk hole, that would allow for enough movement that it wouldn't be a big deal. I put it in place and I find it, rather than, rather than try to hold it, even clamp it, I just took my little pin nailer, that Grex nailer with some uh, eight, uh, 20, uh, 23 gauge nails, and I just put a pin here and here to hold it in place, then I put the screws in. Now I also labeled it, oh, by the way, uh, you always have to be prepared to fix errors. I, when I drew up the dimensions, I didn't recognize that that hinge on the lid really sticks out and it wouldn't fit I and mean, it would not fit. You could force it, but it wasn't going to be pretty. So I took a uh, carving chisel and I just cut a V groove right down from, from uh, here to the bottom. And that allows, when that lines up, That'll fit in there just nice. Doesn't roll or doesn't rattle around. It'll come out if we need it. I countersunk these plenty deep. I don't want a situation where that screw head is anywhere near the surface, which would scratch whatever it sits on. And if this was something was going to be in my house, I would probably get those little neoprene self-adhesive beads, one in each corner. You don't see them. They make it sticky enough so that it doesn't slide easily, and of course it keeps anything from marring or scratching. Overall, I, uh, I actually like the look of it. It, it looks somewhat like a monument. Um, I really like the way this Top turned out with the bevel, the four bevels. I think that looks really nice. It's sitting up above the surface. <clears throat> the dovetails turned out nice. And I think that base is appropriate size-wise to the rest of it. <clears throat> Elevates it, just looks good. Now I'm gonna give you the final dimensions on this. Of course, if you're gonna do something like this, you've gotta fit it around the container that the ashes actually come in. So the upper unit is nine and a quarter long by five and a quarter wide. 
and that section by itself is seven and a quarter tall. This lid, I, uh, I possibly could have raised this up a little bit more. I thought about it. I thought about taking this down, but then that shrinks your, your half blind, and I don't like a small half blind. I think that needs to be robust enough that it has the appearance of strength. So it's uh, the overall height as it sits, including that uh, raised panel, it's eight and three quarter. And if you want the total length with the base, it's 10 inches and the width is six inches. And as I mentioned, this is an inch and a 16th. Now, another idea that I think would actually look nice, I would take this off and have it laser engraved. Nice thing about laser engraving, I, I don't like brass plaques, I think it's, they stand out too much. Laser engraving can be such a nice, fine, tight script. You know, the name and the uh, birth date and death date and anything else that would want to be said on there. I think it would look uh, really nice. But I'm happy with the way it turned out. I've sent a picture off to the uh, person that's going to receive it, and uh, they're thrilled. So next move is to put a few more coats on. I'm going to use, I'm, I'm, I'm using lacquer, a spray-on lacquer. And I like it because... It, the one I use gives moisture protection, but I just, uh, I like the feel of it as opposed to oil, especially if you're going to oil and, and you've got an area down in there and trying to get that res that extra oil out is a pain. It's not worth it. Anyway, well, there you go. A cherry urn, second one I've done in the last uh, three or four months. So who knows? Might have more. Good luck with yours. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.